everybody else has to is be Sanders tough enough on guns but CNN not gun manufacturers and we need to you know stand what? up it isn't gun control it's We're people control it We're going to bring you all in on this but I, Senator Sanders you have to be able to respond as a senator from a rural state what I can tell Secretary Clinton that all the shouting in the world is not going to do what I would hope all of us want and that is keep guns out of the hands of people who should not have those guns and end this horrible violence that we are seeing. I believe that there is a consensus in this country, a consensus that said we need to strengthen and expand instant background checks, do away with this gun show loophole, now there isn't a consensus. The there isn't a consensus, Bernie, because every time there's the one of these phony shootings, the number issue. of so gun purchases soars. Right. So there's no consensus for taking our guns, Bernie. Skyrocketed under Obama. You passed gun legislation as governor of Maryland, but you had a Democratic-controlled legislature. President Obama couldn't convince Congress to pass gun legislation after the massacres in Aurora, in Newtown, in Charleston. How can you? <laughs> and Anderson, I also had to overcome a lot of uh, opposition and the leadership of my own party to get this done. Look, it's fine to talk about all of these things, and I'm glad we were talking about these things, but I've actually done them. We passed comprehensive le uh, gun safety legislation. All these people Not bragging about how the they polling, infringed our the protected at, at rights the, uh, what the polls say, under the Constitution. And Anderson, here tonight, Those are God-given rights. Audience that are enshrined in the Constitution, they're proud very, of infringing on them, and they want to do more. Sandy and Lonnie Pathetic. Phillips are here from Colorado. Oh, Sandy and, and Lonnie Phillips. Jesse there you go. Was they get around, don't they? Was one of those who they? lost their yeah. lives in that awful mass shooting in Aurora. Now, to try to transform And they sued a gun company and got, they went to got nailed on that, didn't they? Sometimes progress does happen right. when you file... A frivolous court, lawsuit, and they case, got uh, blowback financially from that, too. Senator, Those are the same people the that we ran into at the San Antonio uh, Open Carry Rally that uh, Alex talked to. Ammunition yeah, I think uh, Chris Christie's actually got a lawsuit going right now with Krispy Kreme. He's suing them for uh, being obese. didn't even ask where it was going, and not only did their case get thrown out of court, they were slapped with two hundred thousand dollars in court fees that's right of the way that's that right NRA don't file frivolous lawsuits that's a lesson for money it's time to stand up and pass comprehensive that's gun a good book title a <laughs> lesson for lonnie <laughs> <laughs> yeah you guys need to understand that you're not going to take the guns you can grandstand on all this all you want but you're not going to take them in that law and i think we have to take as reason magazine pointed out there's several steps we got to get People elected who will do this voice. dirty deed, then you got to go through and, and change the Constitution. You got to create legislation, and, the and then you got to go around and confiscate it. Rural states are different than Good luck with that. Whether we like it or not. Let's go to Kit now. Uh, Kit, what's up? Yeah, I got two more tweets for you guys. I want to share. Uh, one is from Thought Sandwiches, who says, "Tom Chomsky, Michael Moore, and now Bernie Sanders. They tell you the truth." and give you a false solution under the left-right paradigm. Now, I'm not really convinced that Bernie Sanders is always telling the truth, but what, I, what interests me about this tweet in particular is that I notice a lot of college kids, they flock to Bernie Sanders because they think he's anti-establishment, but this guy really is, I mean, he's kind of like the Pied Piper. He's definitely an establishment candidate. I mean, socialism by its very nature is establishment. I mean, Hitler was pushing socialism. Uh, Fascist Italy was pushing, Mussolini was pushing socialism. I mean, socialism and the establishment, the status quo, has always been intertwined. And here's another uh, tweet, if I could scroll up here. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was telling us about the uh, concentration of wealth, and certainly that's a problem. But it's a false description of how that happened and a false solution that involves even more concentration of power into the government's hands. Yeah, absolutely. And this other tweet... Uh, Guys, guys wearing the same shirt Joe Biggs is. <laughs> hey, hang on a second. Hang on a second, Kit. Let's hear what Jim Webb has to say about, uh, about guns. The first is the issue of mm -hmm. who should be kept from having guns having, and using firearms. And we have done not a good job on that. A lot of them are criminals, and a lot of the people who are getting killed are members of gangs inside our urban areas, and a lot of them are mentally incapacitated. Mm -hmm. And the shooting in, uh, in Virginia, Tech, uh, in 07, uh, this individual had have received uh, medical care for mental illness from three different professionals who were not allowed to share the information. So we do need background yeah, checks. We don't want to and more keep the drugs from big pharmaceuticals. Away from them. But we have to respect the tradition in this country of people who want to defend themselves and their family from violence. Senator, there are, I know, may I, people are going back and forth here for 10 minutes here. 
You know, there are people at high levels in this government who have bodyguards. 24 hours hey. a day. Hey, whoa, someone's actually going to say something. Good American for you, Jim. Does not have that. <laughs> Hashtag disarm to Obama. Their family. Senator Chief, uh, Governor Whoa, Chief, that's, an now that's gutsy. That's Hashtag gutsy to say that in a Democrat yeah. debate. Yes, sir. Hashtag disarm Obama. That's like Ron Paul telling the Republicans, don't start another war and getting food. It's time and time again when legislators step up to pass common sense gun safety legislation, the gun lobby moves in and tells the people they're coming to take away your guns. And they're successful at it. In Colorado and other you know, states, just labeling your gun control common issues as common sense, sense doesn't make them defeated. common sense. So it doesn't make them so any less authoritarian. It doesn't make them any less about confiscation. It's simply the way the Democrats like to use semantics and labels right. to deceive people. And that's uh, calling it common sense, calling it an assault weapon. It's absolute total nonsense. We need to see through their methods, uh, the way that they, they label and use semantics. It's, it's, that's well, their, a lot of the their common sense mind. legislation that they are saying, it, it already exists. Yeah. <laughs> so those laws are already on the book, so it's... Is, I wrote right back to them and laid out what it actually did, and that's why not only did we pass it, but the NRA didn't Thank dare you. to petition it to referendum I wanna, because we my, built my, a public... I want to move on to another <laughs> issue which is in the headlines right now, another crisis-making headline. Secretary Clinton, Russia... They're challenging the U.S. and Syria. According to U.S. intelligence, they've lied about who they're bombing. You spearheaded the reset with Russia. Did you underestimate the Russians as, and as president? What would your response to Vladimir Putin be right now in Syria? Well, first of all, we got a lot of business done with the uh, Russians when Medvedev was the president and not Putin. We got a nuclear arms deal. We got the Iranian sanctions. We got an ability to bring important material and equipment. Hey, where'd your southern accent go? There's no doubt that when Putin came back in and said he was going to be president, uh, that did change the relationship. We have to stand up to his bullying, and specifically in Syria, stand up to his it bullying. is important. That's right, he can't bully that, our that bullies. Is, he's Those so are bullied. our bullies. <laughs> he's, he's Those over are our bullies. We went ISIS ISIS our ISIS <laughs> and, and, and taking <laughs> our people out of That's, that's right. horrible. They, they need to stand up to his killing ISIS. Yeah, he's bullying ISIS. Why is he bombing our moderate uh, rebels that are so nice and really aren't al Nusra or ISIS? Or Al-Qaeda. Wow. And I think it's important, too, that the United States make it very clear to Putin that it's not acceptable uh, for him to be in Syria. Look, we all understand more that chaos, the U.S. government was the one that on began the all these color revolutions, that, started the the secession of Ukraine from I'm the Russian advocate. Federation. Why is it acceptable for the U.S. to be there? Explain yeah. that. Yeah. Why? Putin can't bomb people. Putin. We can bomb anybody. And we Obama's can. drones can bomb anybody. Right. You're talking about and it's not a war here. crime when we bomb a hospital there in Afghanistan. Well, it's okay. That's what Obamacare is. Drone strikes. <laughs> there you go. There's your next yeah. t-shirt. <laughs> I'm the former chairman, Anderson, of the Senate Veterans Committee. Oh, God, here and we in go. In that capacity, yeah. I learned a very powerful lesson about the cost of war. And I will do everything that I can to make sure that the So he United was on a committee. Why don't you talk to uh, Jim Webb, who actually right. went to a war like <laughs> and actually fought a war and actually says you need to have a declaration of war if we're not attacked. I mean, this is just the, the American interventionism, the adventurism that we participate in, the lies in which they rig us into wars. And this is both parties. I mean, this... What is this? This guy right here looks like the Pepper's Farm guy. What does he know about war? Yeah. <laughs> he learned a lot on the committee. Governor Chafee, you were the only Republican Interesting they wouldn't in the talk Senate to Jim Webb about that. ...against the Iraq yeah. war. You say Secretary Clinton should be disqualified from the presidency because she voted in favor of using force in Iraq. She has since said that her vote was a mistake. Why isn't that good enough? Well, we just heard Senator Sanders say that it's the worst decision in American history... That's very significant. The worst decision in American history, I just saw, heard from Senator Sanders. So as we look ahead, if you're going to make those poor judgment calls, a critical time in our history, we just finished with the Vietnam era, getting back into another quagmire. Well, you uh, might ask her about Libya and Benghazi. Maybe that was a mistake, that too. That poor decision the mistakes were in made. 2002 to go into Iraq when there was no <laughs> real evidence of weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. I know, because I did my homework. And so uh -huh. that's a, an indication of how someone will perform in the future, and that's what's important. Secretary Clinton, he's questioning your judgment. 
Yeah. Yeah, I think well, everyone is. Everyone is. Very well. Being on a <laughs> debate stage, I think about 25 times with uh, then Senator Obama debating this very issue after the election. That's why I don't want to do debates anymore. Secretary of State. <laughs> He valued my judgment, and I spent a lot of time with him. And I don't value it all. In the Situation Room, going over some very difficult issues. You know, I, I agree completely. We don't want American troops on the ground in Syria. I never said that. What I said was we had to put together a coalition. In fact, something that I worked on. A coalition on of I ISIS to uh, hold Americans at bay and yes, keep them at home in fear for their lives region. with all these different because threat levels and oranges and yellows and the TSA. Yeah, they got a coalition of ISIS and Al-Qaeda, Saudi Arabia, Al-Nusra, all these different groups. <laughs> That's their coalition. To our friends and neighbors in the region. She should have a political debate uh, think, uh, muzzle, one of those things on her. Right. This, the tough but don't let Putin bomb ISIS, even though he's bombed many different areas that apparently the U.S. has been fighting them for more than a year now, and they didn't find those areas that Russia's found in about a week. So. Senator Sanders, I want to bring you in here. My question for you is, as a congressman, uh, you voted against the Iraq War. You voted against the Gulf War. You're just talking about Syria. But under what circumstances would a President Sanders actually use force? Yeah. So Let me we just want to have war in this country. Are, are you going to give us the wars we want? Uh, first of all, she is talking about, as I understand, that a no-fly zone in Syria, which I think is a very dangerous uh, situation. Yeah, could lead right to about real that. problems. Second of all, I heard the same evidence from President Bush and Dick Cheney and Don Ronsfeld about why we should overthrow Saddam Hussein and get involved in the war. I would urge people to go to BernieSanders.com, hear what I said in 2002, and I say without any joy in my heart, that much of what I thought would happen about the destabilization, in fact, did happen. So I think... And as he talks about this no-fly zone I in Syria, it was President Rand Paul who said recently, uh, what you're talking about here is drawing a red line in the sky over Syria, telling the Russians, do not cross that, even though the Syrian government, even though the Iranian government are inviting you there, you better not fly there or we're going to come and attack you. I mean, that right. is absolute but they can fly insanity. There That's Dr. Strange love level insanity. They can fly there, though, and drop 50 pounds of yes. ammunition yes. and drop yes. more weapons to other groups, Uninvited, whoever they decide. Yeah. That. Yeah, that's right. That's why they need those disappearing drones from DARPA. Right. When our country is threatened or when our allies are threatened, I believe Let's go back that to we Kit need and see what he's got on, uh, on social media. Kit? Yeah, I got a great tweet here from Hornet. It says, was Hillary talking about gun control in Benghazi? Now, <laughs> it really catches my eye because Hillary and also Obama, they talk about gun control here domestically in the U.S., but you don't, when it comes to arming Syrian rebels, they don't talk about gun control there. Right. I mean, That's let's, right. for example, let's say that they're right, that the Syrian rebels are, in fact, moderate and secular, even though they're not. But there, you don't see uh, President Obama or even Hillary calling for gun, uh, background checks for moderate Syrian rebels. <laughs> They're just giving guns over there, like, freely. Well, they, didn't they spend, like, $500 million, $50 million or something yeah. vetting that? So those are their background checks. Well, that's a great point. <laughs> and they just paid uh, six and a quarter million dollars to uh, train some moderate rebels. It was, They're equipping them. It yeah. was $500 million on five people. So $100 million oh, per yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, that was like another one. Who yeah. then defected to ISIS? Well, and, of course, <laughs> you know, as we pointed out multiple times, I pointed out uh, two days after there was a shooting in Oregon, we had Obama do his own hospital hospital shooting and of course they can't be bothered to even investigate what went wrong that went on for an entire half hour even though they were calling and telling people you're you're attacking a hospital you're attacking a hospital they had given the information prior to that to the afghan government to the pentagon uh, that's not being investigated we have to be concerned about one mentally deranged person on pharmaceutical drugs and we all have to give up our guns for that but we can't even get any control over Obama, the Obama administration or over the military. Nobody is going to even answer to what happened there. There's not going to be Obama any is the first Nobel Peace Prize winner to bomb another Nobel Peace Prize winner. Yeah, because that was totally fraudulent. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take everyone's yeah. guns. He's but transparent. to be clear, yeah. the drones. David, they are investigating themselves. Yeah, and it right. will be thorough. Well, what they're doing is they're going to throw money to the victims as that's the typical American solution. Let's just throw money at it. You know, if the police uh, beat and kill people, 
we'll give the survivors uh, some money. Uh, right. If we bomb a hospital for a half hour, we'll give coffers. survivors uh, some money. Yeah, and we'll have the taxpayers pay for it. But we are not going to do anything to reform the situation. We're not going to put anybody in jail. We're not going to fire anybody. Uh, instead, we'll just charge the taxpayers.